Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, we've got Al's 23 Dually. We're gonna be installing our cold style coolant riser reroute. That's right, it's got the factory turbo charger on there. The coolant riser has gotta go bye-bye. This truck previously got one of our hot styles coolant riser reroute. You guys can check out that video here. Stick around to the end of the video. We're gonna compare both these kits because they both do the same job, but which one is actually best for you? I got my box open. I'm gonna lay out some parts. I'm gonna get this installation underway. Let's go. UPS just ran, delivered our cold style coolant riser reroute for our fifth gen Dodge Cummins. Let's lay out the parts in this package. First thing, we're actually gonna grab the coolant riser. This is the coolant riser that will allow us to grab coolant here at the bottom and pull coolant here at the top. Lay that out. We need to locate the O-ring that goes on the bottom of the riser, which you can see here. It's gonna have an Allen head bolt, stainless steel. That way we can bolt through the riser. So we've got those all in one unit. We need to locate the billet T, 5 eighths to 5 eighths. If you have a factory coolant tank, you're gonna need this little guy here. Next up, we're gonna locate our pipe threaded plug that has paste on it. This thing is gonna go in the cylinder head. Lay that down. Let's grab our fittings, our vibrant performance. We're gonna have a dash 90. We're gonna have a dash 10 that's a 90 and a dash 10 that's a 60. Lay them to the side. Two silicone adapters. This long one here is gonna go underneath the coolant tank. This one's gonna block off the coolant tank. Lay that here. We've got our hose clamps that for all the hoses. And then we've got our metric fitting that will go on top of the turbocharger. And if you drive a fifth gen Dodge Cummins only, not fourth gen, this is our exhaust back pressure sensors, fifth gens only. We have two different styles. We have a raw billet and we have our ceramic high temp black. So we've located all of our parts. We've got our hoses. Both these are cut the same length, so you can't mess these up. We went over our parts, we've itemized them out. We'll just grab some tools, let's get to building. We're at the front of the truck, ready to begin the installation. Since we're dealing with coolant, you need to drain all the coolant out of your truck. Take a look over here on the driver's side. You're gonna see we got two coolant jugs and all the coolant is now out. Step one, let's get this plastic valence off the truck. The two tools I'm using, I got a little spoon tool here and I've got a panel popper here. That way you don't ruin these little guys. You can take the little spoon tool, put it up underneath that rivet, pull it straight out, the big guy. Now you can actually pull that out of here. Go along all the way around this plastic balance piece. There's two back here. Once you get all of them out, guess what? This dude just pops off. Now we've got all the rivets out. All you've got to do is grab the plastic piece, barely pull up on it, watch your paint. That piece comes up. That piece comes up, now we're going to lay it to the side and pull off the intake. Next we need to remove the scoop from the intake. I've got a 10 millimeter socket. You've got a bolt here. Undo it. You've got a bolt on this right side. Undo it. Pull the bolts out. This will allow you to actually pull the scoop out of the truck. Give it a little wiggle. Comes out. Now we're ready to move the intake. Next step is we need to get this air intake system off the truck. Now it's got a banks on there, but don't worry, you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket, same as the factory setup to pull this out because we're ultimately trying to get down to your factory coolant riser. Bill plug in what a coolant riser looks like. That's what we're going down to take off. So we've got our eight millimeter, we got a banks, we're gonna go up here to this band clamp, we're gonna undo it. We got it loose, moved over, we're going to the bottom going to be undoing it. We've got two sensors here on the side. I'm going to remove it so you can see. You've got your mass airflow sensor, intake air temp sensor. Grab those connectors, pull them off. This big intake, now we need to get it up out of the way. Lay your intake tube to the side. It's a banks, boys, it's in there for life. Give it a little pull. Lift her out. Jesus came out. Go set it to the side. We're going to be on to the next step. Our next step is when you get the hot side intercooler pipe out of the truck. You need to get your 11 millimeter socket. When you start undoing all the T-bolt clamps, two at the top, one at the bottom. So now let's undo those, and then we'll gracefully 
pull out that pipe and not scratch anything gracefully. So now we've got all three clamps off our hot side intercooler pipe. You guys are gonna take yours out. I'm gonna take mine up, very gracefully pull it out, and then we're on to the coolant of getting this coolant riser reroute, the cold style, underway. So now we've got our hot side intercooler pipe out of the truck. We've gotta have this out, why? So we can get to the bottom of the coolant riser. Right down here where my finger's on, this one already has the hot style kit on there, but we're about to remove that little block and upgrade to the cold kit. So let me put this on the back of the truck. We'll start routing some coolant. This is the part that we're gonna be removing from the truck. Fourth and fifth gen owners, now this all makes sense. This is what we call the coolant riser. We're gonna be upgrading this, making it low profile. This is what actually gets coolant out of the turbocharger, pushes it down here to the bottom of the block, water pump gets it, pushes it through. How do we get this out? Eight millimeter socket. You'll see down here, Phil's showing you guys where the bolt will go through. Undo that. My next port right here, you're gonna undo that coolant line. You've got a little guy up top, and then you've got another big guy right here at the back. Undo all the coolant lines. Move this alternator line just a little bit out of the way. Gently pull this out, because you've already drained all your coolant out of the block. So pull it. Gently pull this guy up and out of there. That is the factory coolant riser that we're gonna be upgrading to our low profile kit. Now let's go over the coolant lines at the back of the firewall. This is where the billet teat comes into play. Our next step is to get coolant out of the firewall, the lower coolant hose, over to the coolant tank and down to the coolant riser. What will we need to complete this? We're gonna need our billet teat, which is this guy here, a silicone fitting and coolant hose. So take a closer look. That's a factory line at the bottom of the firewall. Leave it on there. Route it over to the coolant tank. Yes, your fender well is gonna be out of the truck so you can do this. You're gonna take your silicone adapter, push it up to the bottom of the coolant tank. See that little nipple? Put it on there. The top of the coolant T, as for reference, you can check out here. Coolant T goes at the bottom of the silicone adapter. This hose in here will attach to the firewall hose that just came out. And then lastly, this fitting needs to go to our newly provided loom coolant hose. Runs to it and it's going down here to our coolant riser. Now we need to grab our coolant riser and attach these fittings. So we went to the toolbox and we grabbed three items that we're about to put on. We removed our coolant riser. That's where our billet coolant riser reroute will come into play. As you guys can see, it's got a fitting here for coolant to go back to the block and a fitting here for coolant to go back in. We need to put on our O-ring and then grab our Allen head bolt. On the back side, you guys are gonna to get to see a groove where that O-ring will fit nice and flush. Always like to put a little bit of silicone on there. That way it goes in the block easy. So let's grab this guy. We got our Allen head bolt bottom of the block. Gently press it into the block. This is a metric bolt M5. Please guys don't give me any shit about that. M5 Allen. We got bigger fishes to fry. We gotta clean up this engine bay. Get that bolt in the block. 3 8 ratchet. Do not try to break it off in there. It needs to be snug but not overly tight. All right. Now the next part is very important, so that way you put on the right fitting. Let me go to the toolbox, grab the right fitting, so that way you guys can see how to have clearance between the coolant riser and the oil filter. We went to our toolbox and we grabbed our Dash 10 60 degree fitting. Now this one is specific, why? Because we need room when we put on this fitting between the oil filter and it, so that way you can actually change the oil in your truck. Let's dive a little bit deeper. You can see I put the fitting onto the AN threads. I'm moving it up and down. You've got your extra coolant hose here from the coolant T. Don't forget, we've got to push that on there. Grab one of the hose clamps as well and tighten it up. 
get the AN fitting tight, grab a one inch open end wrench, righty tighty. So we're going to twist to the fender. That will tighten it up. Tighten the dude up. Don't try to break it off. And once that's done, now we're ready to route coolant from the top of the turbocharger to the top of the coolant riser. We're almost done, boys. Almost done. Our lower coolant riser is now in the block. We've got our lower coolant line hooked up to it, but we've got one more port on top of that billet piece. That is where we're gonna hook up the coolant line that's in your kit. And remember, both of them are the same length. These are cut to length. But that's gonna push on top of the coolant riser, and it's gonna go to the turbocharger. Two more fittings are gonna come into place. This metric fitting here, you see this little stubby guy? You're gonna thread that into the top of the turbocharger. Once it's threaded in the charger, you've got your 90 degree fitting here. 90 degree fitting is what you use on top of it. Guess what? The other end, you're gonna push the coolant hose on there. You'll see a better representation, but mine's already done. Check this out. So I've got mine down here at the coolant riser, follow my finger, and give your guys, give you some room with the coolant line, because you can always move it left or right because it swivels. Runs up over the air filter, runs to the turbocharger, and then my fitting goes right here to the top. That way I've got enough room, it looks nice and pretty. Guys, that is the reason why we call this the cold kit, the OEM way of routing the coolant lines, because coolant actually gets sucked up and out of the turbocharger, doesn't make sense, right? Pulls it up and out of the turbocharger, pulls it down that line, puts it right back into the block. Hot coolant sucked right out of it, puts it right back into the block. Good deal. But it's OEM weight. Now we're on to the next step. We're gonna put our exhaust back pressure bracket onto the turbocharger. Our next step is to identify the exhaust back pressure sensor bracket. VGT guys, S400 guys, this thing is crucial. We want it plugged up and we want something holding it. Back here at the back on the turbocharger, fifth gen guys, you're gonna see a heat shield. Remove the bolt out of the very top. That is my locating bolt that I'm going to use to actually hold my exhaust back pressure bracket. In your kit, if you opted for the VGT exhaust back pressure bracket, you can get ceramic black or you can get raw billet. Now let's pre-assemble this thing together. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is the bottom, this is the top. You're gonna put the counter bores up just like this. Let's take, we've got three Allen head bolts. Bill will get a close up of those for you guys. Three Allen head bolts. The two that are the same length, go ahead and put them in the top of the VGT exhaust back pressure sensor bracket. Take your Allen head three sixteenths and tighten them up. Once you tighten them up, you've got one Allen head bolt left. That is gonna go back here at the very back. That bolt that you just removed out of that heat shield, now you're gonna drop that in there. Let's get it dropped in there, and then we're gonna to torque the side ARP bolt through the exhaust back pressure sensor bracket, and she's secure. Now we're moving over to the cylinder head. Now your EGR cooler's off this truck. Right here where my finger's pointing, you're gonna have a silver coolant port. That would have fed the EGR cooler. That guy's got to be removed. So I'm going to do this in real time. My bolts are already out of the top of the valve cover or the crankcase cover. Grab that, pull off all the eight millimeter bolts, put it to the side. Because what we're trying to do, we got to block off that port with our threaded MPT port that I'm showing you guys here. So I'm going to take a wrench, go ahead and remove mine out of the truck. It'll take me just a second. Because what this is, as I'm undoing it, you guys can listen. This is a pressure port. That coolant is coming up out of it, and it's actually pressurizing into the EGR coolant. So on the cold kit, the OEM way, we're fixing to block off that coolant out of there. Not a bad thing. This is just how if we're doing it the OEM way, what's going to take place. So now we're going to take our pasted pipe thread. We're going to put it in here. We're gonna spin it into the block. Grab my 3 8 ratchet. If you guys wanna know what Allen head size, that's a 3 8 Take my wrench. Let's go ahead and spin it down into the block. Keep pushing, keep pushing. I've got about 
two threads sticking up and out of it. I'll try to break it off, but I feel some good resistance, and now we're gonna stop there. So that blocks off the factory feed to your EGR cooler. Now we're gonna move it on to the coolant tank. We've got the cylinder head capped off. There's only one more thing to do to this kit, guys. In your package, you've got a little silicone rubber nipple. Where does it need to go? Right here at the coolant tank. Look at my finger. There's a nipple that's gonna be standing up. Take this, put it right over the top, secure it down with the hose clamp because the coolant tank's gonna be pressurized. Once you secure that dude down, there's only one thing left to do. Put this whole thing back together. Let you guys see our cold style coolant rise reroute for the fourth and fifth gen Dodge Cummins. We get to work. Our 24 Ram Dually is now all put together. What do you think about the underneath the hood of this thing? It's ready to hit the Mustang Dyno. It's now upgraded with our cold style coolant riser reroute. Don't forget to put coolant in your truck, guys. After you start it up, let it idle, turn the heat on, let it get some air out, refill it back up. Now, hang tight, the video's not done. We need to choose which kit is best for you because I've had a lot of good calls, a lot of good comments. And believe me, I value that. That's the reason why we have two kits. It's for you. Now the cold kit that you've seen installed today, it follows the OEM procedures of coolant flowing out of the turbocharger. Let me show you a little bit closer. It's gonna blow your mind, right? The turbocharger actually gets coolant sucked out of it. Through the riser down here, the water pump grabs it, spins it, and then pushes it back over. It never actually goes through the radiator and gets cool. We're gonna call it the cold kit because it's the OEM routing way. So if you're a guy that wants to follow those procedures, that's a perfect kit for you. What about aesthetically pleasing? Which kit looks better? Honestly, the cold kit, yes, you can route it, make it fancy, and clean up that whole engine bay. So I would say the cold kit wins on cleanliness. Now let's go over to the hot kit. A lot of questions about this one, and guys are hesitant, but that's fine. The hot kit, check out that video here. Why do you call it the hot kit? It's because of this. I take coolant, which is 180 to 200 degrees, and I take it out of the head, which will help cool the head, which will help the head gasket, send that coolant over to the top of the turbocharger, pressing down on it, and pushes coolant into the block. Yes, it pushes coolant into the block, has enough force to flow through there. I like that kit, why? because we get a little bit of temperature off of the cylinder head. We push it down through the turbocharger instead of pulling a vacuum. That's not the OEM way. If you are a guy and you live in climates, say 50 degrees and below all the time, or if you're in Alaska, Canada, put the hot kit on your truck. If you are a US citizen in the United States of America, you can run the cold kit. That will be totally fine for you guys. Either of the two works, but if you want specifically, temperature is where I base those kits off. So if you're an OEM guy, want the OEM routing, go the cold kit. If you want the hot kit because you live in a cold environment, put that on your rig. Either of the two kits work for you guys. Make for sure you like, subscribe to YouTube channel. And if I have thoroughly confused you about this kit, you give me a call and I promise you I will help you out. Like and subscribe, we'll see you back here at Point Blank Performance.